I trust that you are doing well and that you are busy uh, preparing for the exams. This recording is about uh, Muslim marriages and Hindu marriages. It's just going to be a short uh, explanation whereby I just give you an update on the legal development. You might have seen in your textbook that it is written that Muslim marriages are currently not legally recognized. This has been the position up until the year uh, 2020 when the Constitutional Court came to the rescue of spouses, especially women who are married uh, in terms of Muslim marriages or in terms of Islam rights. In the case of a Women's Legal Center Trust versus the President of the Republic of South Africa, the Constitutional Court declared that the common law definition of marriage was unconstitutional insofar as it did not recognize Muslim marriages. Additionally, the court ruled that the Marriage Act and the Divorce Act were unconstitutional in that they did not recognize Muslim marriages because they are not registered in terms of civil marriages. In the same case, the Constitutional Court held that Section 7, Subsection 3 of the Divorce Act is inconsistent with, inconsistent with the Constitution in that it fails to make a provision for redistribution of assets on the dissolution of Muslim marriages. Uh, currently, uh, Muslim currently there is no legislation, unlike uh, the other uh, marriages, for example, the civil marriages, which is regulated by the Marriage Act, the customary marriages, which is regulated by the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act, and the civil union, which is uh, regulated by the Civil Union Act. Currently, there is no legislation that recognizes Muslim marriages, but the Constitutional Court has held that uh, Muslim marriages, uh, them being declared not legally recognized, is unconstitutional. And the Constitutional Court has, as a result, provided some remedies for Muslim marriages, for spouses who are in Muslim marriages. You can read uh, the case Women's Legal Center Trust versus the President of the Republic of South Africa if you want to understand in detail uh, the position of Muslim marriages and what the Constitutional Court has held. In your textbook, you will uh, also see uh, cases or court judgment which were decided before the Constitutional Court uh, decision. Uh, cases like Daniels versus Campbell, where it, uh, where it was held that the surviving spouse in a monogamous Muslim marriages qualify as a spouse in terms of the Interstate Succession Act and the Maintenance of, uh, of Surviving Spouses Act. And cases like the Hassam versus Jacobs, uh, Rayland versus Etros, Ed, uh, Amont uh, versus uh, Multilateral Motor Vehicle Accident. These cases or this court judgment were decided before uh, the constitutional court's judgment and this judgment were giving uh, spouses in a uh, Muslim marriages some piecemeal rights. For example, say, others uh, court judgment gave spouses the right to inherit interstate, others they gave them the right to claim uh, maintenance in terms of the maintenance of survival spouses act. Others, like for example, the AM versus RM gave a uh, Muslim spouses, especially Muslim women, the right to actually bring a claim in terms of Rule 43 of the uniform controls. But this, uh, you need to know uh, these uh, cases for the purpose of the exam, but uh, for the purpose of practicing, if you are now uh, either a student or maybe you are working for a law firm or in future, what you need to know thoroughly is 
uh, the case Women's Legal Center Trust versus President of the Republic of South Africa, because this is now the binding uh, judgment. We will no longer be looking at what these cases are saying, but we will look at what the Constitutional Court case had, the Constitutional Court has held. But remember, I said for the purpose of your exam, please read other cases so that you know that before the Constitutional Court made its decision, what did the other courts uh, held and yeah, in respect of Muslim marriages. Now, coming to Hindu marriages, unfortunately for now, Hindu marriages are still not uh, legally recognized. So if spouses uh, enter into a Hindu marriage, they need to, over and above, enter into a marriage in terms of either uh, the Marriage Act or in terms of the Civil Union Act. Remember, in terms of the Civil Union Act, uh, the Act allows spouses of the same sex and, again, spouses of the opposite sex to enter into a marriage in terms of the Civil Union Act. So for spouses who enter into a Hindu marriage, if they just uh, enter into a Hindu marriage and they do not take it further and enter into a marriage in terms of the Marriage Act or the Civil Union Act. Spouses might have challenges uh, when the Marriage Act. That means that if a spouse wants a certain benefit, they will have to bring a court application in order for the court to grant them that, uh, that benefit. So uh, at the present moment, you need to be aware that mostly the Constitutional Court has given uh, or has declared that Muslim, it is unconstitutional for Muslim marriages not to be legally recognized, but it has not yet ruled on Hindu marriages. This is just a short uh, summary on the position of Muslim of uh, Muslim marriages and Hindu marriages, also other religious uh, marriages which we do not cover uh, in this course, but that you need to be aware of. For example, the Rastafarian marriages or the Shembe marriages, over and above the religious rights that the spouses enter into, they need to enter into the marriage in terms of the other, uh, in terms of either the Marriage Act, the Civil Union Act, or the Recognitions of Customary Marriages Act, because those religious marriages are also currently not legally recognized. As always, if you need any further information, please feel free to send me an email on monaring, uh, M-O-N-A-R-K-N at unisa.ac.za. Please, uh, students, uh, study your textbook, everything in your textbook. Remember that the exam is an open book, is a multiple choice questions. Although it's an open uh, book, you must study. And as I always say, firstly, make sure that you study to understand so that once you understand uh, the subject, it's going to be easy for you to now study to prepare for the exam, to know, uh, you know when you get a question, once you understand, it's going to be easy for you to actually understand and maybe quickly go to the page to find the answer. Uh, of the specific question that you have been asking. Thank you, uh, students, and good luck.